Well, now to a second chance at freedom after a wrongful conviction. Retired police officer Jack McCullough was convicted of murdering a seven-year-old schoolgirl back in 2012. Her disappearance made headlines. The crime took place in 1957, but McCullough was released on Friday and his conviction vacated. It comes after phone record evidence shows he was 40 miles away at the time of the little girl's abduction. Well, now McCullough says he will sue the state for suffering five years of imprisonment. Here's his stepdaughter blasting the cops involved in his conviction. The Seattle police and those involved in Sycamore do not even bother to hide their immoral behavior. And why should they when they know they will not be held accountable? In their prospective careers, how many other innocent people did they send to prison? How many guilty people were allowed to go free because the police and the prosecution were too busy in framing innocent people because it was the expedient thing to do? Joining us, our legal panel, both criminal defense attorneys, Jonna Spillbore and Brian Claypool. Jonna, when you get into the details of this case, it is absolutely amazing. I can't believe that this guy was ever convicted in the first place. You and me both, John. You know, you have cold cases and then you have unsolvable cases. And this case squarely falls in the latter. And no prosecutor should get a pat on the back for getting a conviction against somebody when in order to do so you have to so manipulate the rules of evidence and so manipulate the evidence itself including not giving over evidence that would have helped uh, exonerate this man and that's what happened here does this defendant have a case against the state for for wrongful conviction and, and yes absolutely maria ridolph was a seven-year-old girl disappeared in 1957 she was playing in the snow with a friend a teenager, apparently a teenage boy, man, walks up to her and says, hey, you want a piggyback ride? Maria says yes. Her friend runs off to get some mittens, comes back, and Maria's gone. They found her bones in the woods a few months later. But, Brian, there was no evidence linking this guy to the crime except for an eyewitness identification that had to be very suspect. Yeah, hey, John, this is what I call cold case chaos. These cold cases are cold for a reason, because there's no credible evidence that supports the prosecution, and that's why they're cold. How do you go 20 years, and then all of a sudden you've got some magical evidence to put McCullough on trial? Let's talk about the evidence. There was exculpatory evidence here, too, John. There was a phone call that McCullough made from a paid phone where he called his parents collect, and that phone call was during the time where this little girl was abducted, John. And where was that evidence? He yeah. was 40 miles away, number one. Number two, the lineup you're talking about was clearly suggestive. That means that what the police did is they put in five or six other guys who were in, like me, in a suit and tie, and then they had McCullough, who's in ragged clothing. Now, who do you think the person's going to choose in that lineup? That's a constitutional violation flat out so many times John and we hear of you know organizations like the innocence project helping a guy like this get out right. this guy was exonerated not by a defense attorney but by the prosecutors the new prosecutor just elected to the office in DeKalb County said you know the previous guy the previous prosecutor put together this case and it's entirely bogus exactly and you know here's the main takeaway I think from this case is the truth is to be uncovered not concocted and I think what the new prosecutor was saying at the top cop the state's attorney was saying is look I firmly believe in this defendant's innocence which is why there's not going to be a retrial and which is also why there's probably going to be a big fat check written in his name from the state yeah. instead of having but, to, to Brian, try his wrongful conviction. Brian, real quickly, it's my understanding the judge is not letting him leave the state until there is a further uh, adjudication of this case. Why not just let the man go back to Seattle? Well, look, what John has said is correct. And I've done these cases. I worked with the Innocence Project in Northern California on a case similar to this. And I will tell you, we ask for a million dollars a year when somebody's wrongfully convicted. This guy was out five years. I would ask for $2 million a year because they should let him walk free right now and let him move on with his mm -hmm. life. This, and, and John, one more quick thing. We need new laws for cold cases. Yep. After 10 years, you need a special prosecutor appointed to vet out 
any potential alleged new evidence before it goes to trial. He missed five years with his <laughs> with his grandkids, his kids, his wife. What a what a story. I'll second that. Jonas Spillbore, Brian Claypool. Thank you. thank you both. You bet. Thanks, John.